Hey folks, David Hubble here, and it is the seventh week of the 2023 Fall Mallee Toss season. And uh, I've got your weekly update. It's so it's also Thanksgiving week, so hopefully a lot of you will be cooking Mallee Toss as part of your Thanksgiving uh, celebration. Maybe stuffed Mallee Toss or Mallee Toss casseroles. But probably more than likely you're having to settle for the store-bought chaudis that you can find at many of the local regional grocery stores. If that's the case, just remember that store-bought melatons are always great to eat, but don't ever plant them. Unless you know for a fact that they have grown in the local area and they're an heirloom. Otherwise, you don't want to cross-pollinate and maybe to diversify our heirloom melatons that have been adapted to the Gulf Coast. By that, what you could end up happening is you could cause later flowering and fruiting issues and then you end up with fruit coming on when it's about to freeze. Also a lot of the store-bought plants are treated not so much for planting so much as for preparation for eating. So they may carry with them some plant-based uh, diseases that could be spread to your local vines or local vines in the area. So once again, again store-bought melitar, good for cooking and eating, but bad for planting. So let's go check out the vine and see how it's doing. Well, it's time to get back to the garden. It's week seven of the 2023 fall melitar season from Westmobile. Uh, after all we've been through this past summer, as I keep saying, the vine's looking good. Uh, got a little bit of wind today and finally got some sun. It's had like four or five days of not intense but steady rain um, which was good uh, I think you can see it's reflected well now you see these holes here uh, and you may even hear it in the background as the winds blowing I get uh, acorns that keep falling through so I think that's a uh, little bit of acorn damage there but the plants looking good once again it's just you know about four or five weeks behind looking good you can see here maybe maybe i have to move my finger hey great somebody's mowing their lawn that's always nice to have and i'm trying to film outside uh anyway there's a female there somewhere so but we will uh keep looking for those um if I'm fortunate, I might have a few that you know keep producing into end of, through December. Um, obviously, I'm not going to have any for Thanksgiving this week, but I usually do mine at Christmas time anyway, and I have some frozen from last year in there that I will use to make my dressing if I do not get any or do not buy any from the store. Um, like I said. Now's the time of year to buy, uh, you know, cook with store-bought melitons or chayotes, but don't plant them. So anyway, let's go digging in. Let's go uh, with our, check on our girl here, if I can find her. There she is. I uh, still really hadn't progressed much beyond my thumb size. Actually kind of surprised. It seems like a little slower growth than I remember be pretty much the same as what you keep seeing from week to week mostly just trying to capture the uh, standpoint of this um, just the progress from week to week of the vine here in Mobile uh, like I see I say I keep getting in reason to rejoice in the fact that the vines doing well but disappointed always because of the fact I'm not producing any melitons so I'm gonna try to find some females and I'll get back with you as we uh, progress through oh wait you can kind of see it maybe through the net if I can get to it yeah there's one right back there you can see there's a little bit of a female bud there uh, not really all that exciting but once again um, that should mature to the uh, flowering stage this week I got a couple of nice male blooms there you can 
can see that female there. Maybe. There he is. You can see that female there. So, trying to hand pollinate that one. And then we got another one right there that's coming along. So, that's very encouraging. And it looks like a nice male flower there to contribute. We have another female flower right there as well, right about there. So it's getting a little encouraging, but you know, when you're talking about a handful versus tens, twenties, like we had the last several years, it's still a little bit uh, sad and disappointing, but like I said, take what you can get. But you know, the thing about the growing Melitone is that uh, anybody who's done it for any amount of time knows that you have the highs and the lows from year to year, and uh, even in the Gulf Coast, and uh, you know the challenges are going to either be the heat, the rain, the squirrels, and I know there's you know soil conditions, drainage, all kind of things, uh, getting the right varieties. So I mean you can be successful for several years, and then you have one bad year, and you just have to you know keep hoping that um, you got to be persistent with it and uh, that's one of the things that uh, growing melaton vines should teach people is that uh, you know it may take you several years don't give up after three tries or three years uh, and don't give up after you've had a really great crop and then it all goes to you know goes kaput the thing about it is trying to preserve these varieties takes work and um, while it'd be nice to just always brag and show you got 200 melatons that you picked, uh, it's not always the case. And you know, most most of us I think are in it for the long haul, um, hoping to make these available, not just to eat but to grow and uh, for you know next generations to enjoy. You know, I'm not sure whether my kids will want to try to grow them, but hopefully. Uh, There'll be some distant cousins or people that will in be interested in it. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to keep and share these good things that we have. Is to work hard at uh, preserving them. And like I said, sometimes it's just doing what you can to keep the vines alive. Other times it's uh, cooking the recipes. Which we can do, thankfully, with the chayotes. So it'll be a pretty, pretty good similarity. So we can still have our meals. Um, but even those may be difficult this year because of the uh, the heat. So uh, we'll have to see how things are in, uh, in the stores. But so far what I've seen uh, advertised is it looks like we've got the regular 10 for a dollar going. So anyway, uh, that's about all the females I find out here right now. So I will uh, pollinate those and I will uh, get up with you in the closing. Well, you see that not a lot has happened in the last uh, week. Um, the one melaton that I've got that seems to be about thimble size or thumbnail size hasn't really changed at all so I'm kind of not sure whether it's really going to do anything. I have seen more and more females coming on and that's a good sign but I'm not sure whether I will get enough before Christmas time. There uh, is the potential for freezing or cold weather below 39 to hit the mobile area in the upcoming week after next. So I may actually have to cover up what I have. The good news is that with the system that I've got and with the lack of growth, I ought to be able to cover it with some uh, visqueen or some other protection. And there's a video that I will link to that you can um, find that'll show you how to overwinter your melatons. But people, once again, throughout South Alabama and the Mobile area have been very fortunate and are doing well. So it gives me hope. So um, we'll see. But hopefully you and your family will have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, if this information has been helpful, please like and share on your favorite social media. Please uh, subscribe to the David J. Hubble YouTube channel. And you can check us out on Meliton.org, M-I-R-L-I-T-O-N.org. Hopefully any Melitons that have been produced will be coming available within the next um, month to two months. So you hopefully can find sprouts or plants by checking out the classified ads there on the internet page as well as the Facebook group. Also we got a group for California and a group for um, 
Texas. And I actually also did a talk this past week with Robin Carpenter from the Farm and Food Shed Report out of California. So if it won't be probably available much longer once this episode airs, because uh, they only keep it for about a week. But it was a great talk and learning about Mellie Tunnels, especially out in California. So I'm hopefully one day get a chance to hear that, and that information hopefully provided some use for the folks out in uh, the California area. But uh, Mellie Tunnels, like we say, grow all over. So you can check uh, that out if it's still available. Also, uh, if you do me a favor, check us out on Rainy Cajun Podcast, which I do with my cousin Jeremy. Uh, where we talk about all things Cajun and Creole and uh, in South Louisiana, especially for the expats out there. So check that out. And um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below or send them to me at rpcajun2r at gmail.com. Appreciate your help. Hope you all have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you next week. And pray for old Melitons.